I have been a software engineer for the last four years, and I've worked paid and unpaid for startups, medium-sized companies, as well as big tech companies such as Microsoft, AWS, and Meta. I first decided to become a software engineer because I wanted good cash and I wanted to be able to work from home so that I could travel wherever and whenever I please. However, these are the five things that I wish I knew before I became a software engineer. I just had a completely different idea on what software engineering is like, so if this is a major that you're considering or with the rise of AI, you're confused whether or not to pursue the software engineering field, this video is for you. Let's get straight into it. Number five, interview cracking is completely different from real world coding. When I first started, I thought I just had to master lead code and be able to do those problems in 30 to 40 minutes and I would be great and good to go. But that was until I joined my first unpaid startup job. I was asked to get started. I was simply asked to query an API and I was completely blank because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to put my code in. My whole life I had been given these little templates and class names and method names in which I simply had to fill out the logic. So even though it sounds easier to do than the actual coding part, I just didn't know how to get started. I also didn't know what an API response is supposed to look like or how to parse it. And I did not understand Git, so I didn't know how to create a pull request or even resolve merge conflicts. Thank God it was an unpaid job because I didn't deserve to be paid. And it's a good thing that I started early as a high schooler and in freshman year of college that I experienced all of these setbacks and understood that real world coding is going to be completely different and something that I need to master. I've also seen the situation in real life where in the previous company that I worked for, there was this guy who knocked his interviews out of the park. He was so good. There were three teams actually fighting for him. And when he was hired, he was then fired in six months. And that was because while he was amazing at interview cracking, he had no idea how to do actual tasks given to him. I've also seen the other side of the coin where there was a senior engineer that I worked with. He had been with the company for the last 20 years and he was absolutely amazing, understood the code base through and through. But when he wanted to change jobs, he was not able to crack interviews because while he was great at software engineering, he couldn't solve a random BP question thrown at him in 20 minutes. So he came to me for a reverse mentorship situation because I was a new grad and I had been through all of those interview rounds and he was asking me how exactly to go about it. And I was really surprised by that because he was the person that I used to go to again and again as a new grad because every time I had a blocker, he was the person who knew what to do. So I guess the word is that you need to master both. For mastering interview cracking, there's obviously websites like LeapCode, Geeks for Geeks, HackerRank, and a few others that help you with competitive coding. And I have linked them for you in the description. And on the other side, in order to master real world software engineering, you need to do projects on your own end to end. And I have a few GitHub repository links that you can use uh, to get ideas. One of them is Build Your Own X. It is one of my favorites where you can build your own whatever from scratch. So I really recommend you take a look, get some ideas and try to do those things on your own, especially if you have zero experience. And obviously the best way to get real world experience is to actually work in the real world. So even if you're pretty young, if you're a high schooler or a freshman in college, just try to work if not paid, then unpaid, but make sure you're just approaching local companies or startups and you're just trying the real thing out. Number four, soft skills matter way more than you think. When I started, I thought being the smartest coder in the room was enough. In fact, the person with good communication skills is the one that is actually put up for promotion because they are able to communicate well and they're able to advocate for themselves. Even in an interview, you need to be able to articulate your thoughts because if you just braze through the solution and quickly pass all the test cases, that's not enough. You need to be able to explain why you chose to solve it a certain way and the time and space complexity and all of that. And it's not just for interviews or promotions. You also need to be able to know how to give feedback, critical feedback in a positive manner, when to push back and when to accept and let things go, how to disagree respectfully, etc. Nobody teaches you these things, but they quietly determine 
how far you progress in your career. In order to work on this, I recommend you read books, lots of books. I try to read at least 100 books every year. And I have a few recommendations for you. The self-help books are obviously gonna be the best when it comes to learning how to communicate in an office environment. But even fiction, nonfiction, anything that you like reading, it's gonna improve your vocabulary. It's gonna help you articulate your thoughts better. So just reading in general is a good hobby that you should try to develop. Another thing you can try to do is public speaking. Try to find these little situations where you can talk. It could be within your university. It could be going to a hackathon or conference. And if not public speaking, then at least when it comes to networking, don't go with your group of friends to a conference or a hackathon and then stick with that group. Try to step out of your comfort zone, go alone. I've been there and I know how awkward it is when you walk into a room and everybody is in groups and you don't know anyone and how are you supposed to approach someone and just start talking but you just have to put yourself in those un uncomfortable situations and that's how you'll kind of break out of your shell. So I really recommend you just network in in-person events as much as possible to also develop those soft skills. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. I really rely on your engagement as a new YouTuber. Number three, you don't need to learn 10 languages. When I was in college, there used to be a few of my classmates who just seemed to know tons of languages. They knew Python and C++ and Java and C Sharp and JavaScript. And I felt like I was behind, but turns out they just knew the very basics, like how to write Hello World, and then they were simply putting it on their resume. I think it's not important to learn all of these different languages. You just need to know one or two, and then it becomes very easy to switch because you wanna go deep instead of just going wide and learning the basics of everything. I would either do Java or C++ and then really go deep, and switching to Python would be very easy after that. And then it's also very easy to adapt because you'll have Google, Stack Overflow, and even ChatGPT at this point, Copilot, and all of these AI tools that you can simply use to then query and ask them the equivalent. For example, I know that I want to use a hash map, but the code is not in Java, it's in Python. So I can just ask Copilot for the hash map equivalent. So I'll get the code for it in Python. So it's very easy to switch. Make sure you master a couple in the beginning and then you can learn the rest on the go. Number two, complicated code is not equal to smart code. I used to see these overly complex codes and get really impressed when people wrote them because I was like, wow, I don't even understand. There's just so much logic stuffed in this little line, but it's not important to always complicate your code to fit everything. It's okay to have a little, like a few more lines of code, as long as your logic is very clean and easy to understand. For example, here are two code snippets. They both do the exact same thing. I'm trying to find the sum of numbers and if it's an odd number, you're supposed to double it. So in the first logic, everything's kind of clogged in one place but in the second logic it's just so easy to understand so i would personally prefer the second logic even though it's impressive that you can write it in the first way it's okay to write it in the second way you're just as smart like you don't have to feel inferior if you're using slightly more lines of code and number one ai will not steal your job but it will expose you copilot chat gpt and several other ai tools out there are amazing and they can exponentially improve your skills but they're not magic they will simply amplify whatever skill level you have so if you're already good ai will make you great but if your fundamentals are shaky you will just introduce more bugs than fix things with your ai generated code so instead of fearing ai you want to use it as a force multiplier if you're someone who's just starting out i would avoid using ai when you're mastering the fundamentals and once you understand what's happening behind the scenes, I would then incorporate AI. But again, it should never be like a black box. You need to know what every single line of code that you generate does. You don't want to simply ask Copilot to generate code for you and then just use it just because. You want to make sure that you understand what's going on and 
at least in my personal experience right now, the first output that comes out is never the most optimal. I always need to tweak it a little bit. So don't fear AI, but also make sure your fundamentals are strong because AI won't be covering your gaps forever. Those were the five things I wish I knew before I became a software engineer. I hope you found this video helpful. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you want to see next. This was a video that was requested by one of my subscribers. So if there's a particular topic that you want me to cover, I'm happy to do that. Thank you.